It's wide open. After the turn, he's got a man. Harper going deep. Caught. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Husker Talk with Jeff. Game one is finally here, so let's get a closer look at the Huskers' first opponent, the UTEP Miners. Now, if you're a Husker fan or just a college football fan in general, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click on notifications as we talk Husker sports daily. Now, let's take a closer look at the Miners and what kind of game we can expect on Saturday. Will Dylan Riola live up to expectation? You know, this is a lot on a true freshman, and we have to remember he's only a teenager and just a year ago was in high school. So let's not expect too much from this young man. So whatever happens, please be nice. He'll get better as time goes on. So let's try not to expect perfection, if you know what I mean. Now, UTEP basically started over this year, bringing in a new head coach from Austin P, a young, fiery guy, Scotty Walden. And Walden is a ball of fire, uh, just, just a ball of energy. And he knows how to win. He's won everywhere he's been. His Austin P teams have a habit of giving Power 4 teams problems. So don't think this is going to be a walk in the park even though UTEP is bringing a new offensive and defensive scheme, they are not without talent and experience as Walden brought not only his coaching staff, but 11 of his former players from Austin P along with him. One of them players is wide receiver Trey Goodman, who was just selected to the Earl Campbell Tyler Rose Award watch list. The senior receiver brings stellar numbers from a year ago who helped Austin P to a 9 and 3 record and they don't lack talent on defense either as UTEP senior Maurice Westmoreland decided to return to UTEP and forego his probably his first round selection in the NFL draft as Maurice is a bona fide first rounder and UTEP is now moving over to a new defensive scheme, moving over to the three, three, five defense. Yes. The same three, three, five defense, Tony white and the Huskers run Westmoreland is planning to move over to that bandit position in that three, three, five. So trust me, he's going to be a handful. Now, Westmoreland led the Miners last year with seven and a half sacks, with 10 and a half tackles for loss, and was considered one of the best defensive ends in the conference last year. Westmoreland is also one of 90 defensive players added to the watch list for Lomb the Lombardi Award. So you could see this team isn't going to be a walk in the park. and. These two players are just the start of what kind of talents on this team. Now, I do expect Walden to spread the defense out and run that fast-paced offense with lots of wide receiver screens, running back, tight end screens, and I'm expecting them to be able to move the ball up and down the field. So if you're looking for a shutout, I don't think you're going to get that in this game. Now, yesterday I brought up that UTEP had their own kind of to Corey Barney type player. As Walden brought over another player from Austin P, one that can give defenses fits, and that is five foot seven wide receiver Cam Thomas. Thomas is just one of those players that once he gets the ball in his hands, he makes things happen just like Barney does. So plan on Walden to do just that on Saturday. Do whatever he can to get the ball in Thomas's hands any way he can, as Thomas is just one of those players that once he gets the ball in his hands, anything. And so that's going to be a battle for the defense. Now, 
Thomas and Goodman are not the only receivers Walden brought over from Austin P. as he brought over a total of four wide receivers as they followed their head coach to El Paso. Now, all can play. So if you're wondering how good the Huskers' defense is, you're about to find out as our secondary is about to be thrown into the fire in game one. Honestly, UTEP might be one of the better passing attacks we'll see until probably Indiana or Ohio State. They definitely won't be like a typical Big Ten opponent, that's for sure. But if you're looking for action, then UTEP is about to give it to you. Now, like I said, Walden brought over brought over some of his coaches and most of his coaches, including J.J. Clark, as his defensive coordinator. And the good news is Dylan Raiola and this offense shouldn't be too surprised by anything UTEP throws at him as UTEP runs that same defensive scheme as the Huskers. So I'm actually expecting Dylan to have a pretty good game just because of this mainly because a lot of UTEP's players will still be trying to figure things out. And if what we've heard about Raiola is true, I expect him to make them pay when they do make a mistake. To me, Dylan has been going against probably the best 3-3-5 defense all spring and fall. Plus, Walden will be starting a whole new secondary, replacing all four starters. But I do expect Walden to have a good year this year and lead UTEP to a bowl game. Now, after watching Scotty Walden's presser the other day, I could see that Walden and Rule are very similar in their coaching styles. So UTEP fans, you have yourself a winner, and I really believe that. But For Saturday's game, I feel the Huskers have just a little too much depth. And with this being UTEP's first game under a new offensive scheme and a new defensive scheme, even though a few of them came over from Austin P and have ran it, it's probably just a little too much to ask for an upset. But Nebraska better look out in 2028 when Walden brings this team back is I expect that game to be a little more competitive. Now, I do expect a close game on Saturday, especially early on in the first half. But ultimately, Nebraska has way too much depth and talent. And as long as the Huskers can keep a hold of the ball, and you guys know what I mean, I feel the Huskers will probably pull away late And win this game, I'm going to say probably 31-17 or 35-17. Now, I'm headed to this game on Friday as I have a 12-hour drive ahead of me. And I thought about jumping on live during the drive. But if not, I'll probably jump on live right after the game once I'm in the parking lot in the car. Just to give kind of my uh, reaction video and my take on what I saw and how I felt it went. And then ultimately, I'll be back on with another uh, video on Sunday uh, right after that. So make sure to comment below. And if you don't mind, I received a couple of questions. And ultimately, I want to see what you guys think. I want to see what your answer is. So if you don't mind, answer these in the comments below. Or you could shoot me an email uh, and answer that way if you want. But question one, who do you think will win this game and what's your score prediction? I mean, do you think UTEP has a chance or are you the opposite? You feel like Vegas is 28 points is plenty and that's probably what it's going to be. Question two, what needs to happen on Saturday for you to be satisfied is just winning good enough for you 21 20 35 34 or do you need to see more than just a win like me do i want to see cleaner tackling no turnovers winning the turnover battle getting more takeaways 
Uh, tackling is key, mainly in the first game. Uh, efficient passing from Dylan Raiola, see, seeing that he can move the move the offense. Is that something you want to see and the score doesn't matter? Or are you one of these that you want to see 56 to 10? Uh, 56, 28. Something like that. So answer in the comments below if you don't mind. Or like I said, if you can't want, you could shoot me an email and answer that way at Jeff at BigRedCountry.net. And like always, don't forget to subscribe and click on notifications. And please smash that like button. It's really appreciated. Thank you for watching. Go Big Red.